Good evening and welcome to Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium inside Ottawa Glendorf High School for tonight's matchup between the Crestview Lady Knights and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Scoop Miller. And Scoop, kind of feels like we're getting a late Christmas present here tonight with this matchup between an Ottawa Glendorf team that after a late start because of a deep tournament run in girls soccer, kind of seems like they're rounding into form. They get Chloe Glenn back tonight and a Crestview team that has been playing incredible basketball, six game win streak, giving Liberty Benton their first loss last week. They right now may be the hottest team in the area. I think you're exactly right. You know, both these teams playing some great basketball at this juncture in the season. You mentioned that six game winning streak for the Knights, but uh, OG since back to back losses have come back nicely to run three consecutive games all by 30 plus points. And these two teams just loaded in basketball tradition. Both these programs have been to the Ohio High School State Championship Final Four five times apiece. Now uh, this doesn't get much better than this, you're right. An extra Christmas present. So we are just about underway. We'll take a look at the starting lineups tonight for both teams. For starting first with the visiting Crestview Lady Knights. They're going to start number three, Macy Kulwicki. Number four, Ellie Klein. Number five, Callie Gregory. Number 15, Kennedy Kreider. And number 21, Josie Kilwicki for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. Number three, Carson Erford. Number 22, Kaylin Roadhouse. Number 32, Kaylin Kimmett. Number 34, Katie Kaufman. And number 45, Chloe Glenn. As you see, Katie Kaufman getting the scoring underway for the Titans. A uh, great start for the Titans that time against the 2-3 zone of the Knights. They did a nice job getting the ball to the corner. Nice entry pass to Kaufman. She made that look awfully easy. And there's Chloe Glenn getting her hand on that. She's going to run the floor. Gets an easy two up. You know, we talked about the starting lineups. There's some changes for both of these teams. First, you know, one right there, Chloe Glenn, back into the starting lineup, has worked her way back from a knee injury, finally back in the starting lineup. She is a big presence for this team, as you can see right off the bat. And then for Crestview, Lacey McCoy, not in the lineup tonight. We saw her during warm-ups in street clothes. Looks like she has, you know, a brace or something going on with her knee. Not quite sure what's going on, but that is a big loss for the Knights. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, she is so athletic, but on the flip side for OG, you have to be pleased to get Chloe Glenn uh, back in that lineup. She's a person that has that ability to just to turn a game around at any time. And right now, OG off to a great start as their defense has really sparked their offense at this juncture. Jumper in the middle that time. That was Ellie Klein. Oh, excuse me, that was actually Josie Kilwicki. And that is her first two of the night. 6.45 left to go here in this opening quarter. As Ottawa Glandorf moves it around. Here's the freshman, Carson Erford. Slips it in to Glenn. Back out, three-point shot on its way. That one's no good. Good box out by the Knights that time. And here comes Callie Gregory. Callie Gregory has had herself a heck of a run here over the last couple of weeks. She's been in over 20 points per game over her last three. And she's going to send a shot up. That one's going to be off the front of the rim. Chases down, tips it to herself. Going to put another shot up. Too much on that one. This one gets poked away. Third opportunity for the Knights to see what they can do with it. And they have this one taken away. Ottawa Glandorf always going to be looking to run that time as Erford tried to force it up ahead to Chloe Glenn. You know, we saw right there for the Knights three different opportunities. And we were talking prior to coming on, you know, Ottawa Glandorf, what they've been able to do on the boards, especially offensively. You know, the last trip down, they were one and done. That is not something you see very often out of one of their offensive sets. No, that's what I think the scariest part for uh, head coach Mark Gregory tonight is how to neutralize the boards. OG's been so dominant. They're rebounding nearly 50% of their missed shots on the season. Just incredible numbers. Open look at three. That one's going to miss everything. Going to end up out of bounds going back to the Titans. And right there, it's a good example of a textbook checkout. You know, the thing that makes OG so solid rebounding is the fact that, yeah, they've got size, but they don't just rely on that size to hit the glass. They do a great job of, of making contact, checking out, trying to establish that position even further. Let's make them a really dominant team. Micah Aldrich checking in for the Titans during that last stoppage as Erford gets the floater to go down for her first two. Third different Titan to score tonight. Now that's a name you're going to hear a lot tonight. You know, the freshman's really starting to kind of find her own right now, averaging nearly double figures, but she also rebounds well. She shoots it well. And again, she's a person that can stretch that defense as well. 
Trying to get it into the teeth of that defense. Has it taken away. Going to get pushed up ahead to Glenn, who had leaked out. She gets it off the glass. Chloe Glenn with her second basket of the night makes it 8-2. And Coach Gregory wants to talk about it. 4.45 left to go. Ottawa Glendorf on top, 8-2. To we'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, division of Alt Seamless Spouting. So Coach Gregory wanted to take a quick timeout here in the first quarter as he saw those fast runouts by Ottawa Glandorf lead to some easy points. And that's what they're going to want to do all night long. They, they do it probably better than anybody I have seen turning defense into offense. They really do. You know, their, their defense typically is their best offense. And Talking to Coach Greg before the game, you know, his biggest concern was protecting the basketball, and they've really struggled here in the first uh, three minutes. And number two was the rebound that we've already talked about. But right now, when OG's playing defense like this, it really ignites that offense. And right now, great start here for the Titans, up eight too early. Ottawa Glendorf made a change during that timeout. Emma Brinkman into the game. As we're going to see Ottawa Glandorf use their bench a lot. They like to bring fresh legs in constantly when they play the type of defense they do. They need it. Crestview on the other side, though, not that deep. As you see another run out, Chloe Glenn one more time leaked out, had to go off her fingertips. And that one's going to be taken away by Kilwicky. She got caught down in that corner, but was able to get rid of it. But Crestview not very deep, only three dressed on their bench tonight. So we're not going to see a lot of substitutions out of them. On the other side, Ottawa Glendorf, they will run numbers at you constantly, trying to wear you down, trying to see if they can't make you make mistakes. Yeah, this is a deep uh, Ottawa Glendorf team. We're going to certainly see that tonight as they're going to try to make this a track meet. They want to try to pick up the pace defensively, which they've done a great job here this man-to-man. -man. Really doing a great job of, of locking down on Callie Gregory, who comes in you know, scoring nearly 20 points a game a year ago. Averaging north of 16 points this year. And right now, they're setting a lot of stagger screens, a lot of curl screens uh, for Gregory. But right now, the Titans defense recognizing it. And they're about uh, one step ahead right now, the Knights. Pressure showing patience here in this set, just trying to come up with something. Trying to work the screens, finding an open body. Can't find anything on the inside. And they finally have it taken away as the Titan defense holds strong. One's going to get pushed ahead. It was looking for Brinkman. But Klein did a nice job stepping in front of it. Gregory's three-pointer off. Rebound down to the Knights. Kilwicky kicks back to Klein. Klein's going to drive. They decide to pull it back out, and they're going to reset. Crestview right now just can't find much of a rhythm. This man-to-man -man defense that Ottawa Glendorf is showing is just a little bit too much for him. Gregory not having a lot. They have two on her pretty much the whole time. And now we're going to have a five-second call. So another turnover by the Knights. Uh, great job by the freshman, Carson Erford. That time she was locked in. Uh, great ball pressure. Gets the five count. You know, that's the one thing, uh, Nate, that's been happening a lot. OG is winning those one-on-one -on -one defensive battles right now. That's so important because if you can do that, you don't have to Double down, you don't have to give help. You can stay locked in. So more changes for Ottawa. Glandorf, Liz, Lily Hazelman's coming into the game for the first time. Offensive rebound for Kimmett, who would check back into the game. And Ottawa Glandorf now with an eight-point lead there on top, 10-2. to two. Well, There's one of those uh, missed shots that turns into a second-chance opportunity for Ottawa Glandorf. Again, this is a team that, so deep rebound. Eight girls for Ottawa Glandorf average three rebounds a game or more. So right now they just do a great job of sending everybody to the glass at both ends. Gowicki along the baseline, gets stuck, has to get rid of it, tries to find Klein, has it poked away by Hazelman. Basketball will stay with Crestview. Under two left to go here in the opening quarter as the Knights continue to struggle to find some openings on offense. Trying to see if they can't get the ball into the hands of Gregory. Look to the bench, get instructions from Coach Gregory. See Kowicki picked the ball up that time in a dangerous spot. 
Had a couple of defenders around her. We're going to have a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Knights. Yeah, that's the one thing Crestview has to be aware of. Anytime you set ball screens, you're kind of inviting the double team out of this aggressive, lengthy, tight defense. And that time, that was almost a five count, ends up being a tie up. The arrow does belong to the Knights, so they'll reset it here. But right now, Crestview, they have to find a way to spread things out on offense, try to slow things down here a little bit, just try to shorten the game here not try to get in that up and down track meet that we talked about earlier. And I think right now, too, they're just being a little predictable with what they want to do with the basketball. They're picking it up too quick. Ottawa Glendorf doing a nice job of jumping into those passing lanes, and when there's nothing to do with it or go with it, they have to force it, and that's what Ottawa Glendorf wants you to do. Shot on its way, that one's no good, as Josie Kowicki couldn't connect. Erford's going to push it down into the corner to Hazelman. Hazelman thought about the three-pointer there for a second, gets it back. Thought about it one more time, but kicks it back out. Erford gets it to Glenn at the free throw line, and now Hazelman will take that shot. That one's going to be off. Offensive rebound down to Kaufman. Kaufman's put back, no good. Second opportunity is going to go up and in. And one opportunity for Katie Kaufman. Well, once again, uh, Otto Glandorf attacking the offensive glass. That time they get a second and third opportunity. And great job there as Katie Kaufman's able to cash in on the third time's a charm. And just like that, the Titans up 10, 12-2 here as we hit the one minute mark here this opening quarter. It's just a great example of why they're so good at getting those rebounds. As you saw down there, multiple Titans were around that rim just marking out, making sure that no one else could get to it but them. And eventually the only way they could get to it was getting the contact and getting the foul as Katie Kaufman is able to connect on the free throw. 11-point lead, Crestview trails right now, 13-2, under a minute left to go here in the opening quarter. Here's Klein, guarded by Hazelman, has to get rid of it. Macy Kulicki looking to the inside, trying to wait for the screen to come, has to pick up her dribble. And right now, Crestview just has no space, and this defense from the Titans has just been smothering. Tried to get that one into Gregory, but has it poked away by Kimmett. That's amazing. When's the last time you've seen a quarter where Callie Gregory was held scoreless? Uh, there's the player that was uh, first team Northwest Conference a year ago. And the OG really making her work to get the basketball at this juncture. Crestview just continuing to try to find some space on the inside but there's so far nothing going, trying to get it to Gregory down low, and now we're going to have another turnover. This one is going to be a travel, going to be called on Kennedy Kreider. And great job by Chloe Glenn. Again, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. She was locked in, forces a turnover. Now the Titans will have the last shot here. The clock hits 10 here in this opening quarter. Hazelman with five seconds goes cross court. Drive, put up floater, no good. Rebound down to the Knights as Caitlin Grothaus was not able to connect on that shot. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. After one, it is all out of a Glendorf. They're on top 13 to 2. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, division of Alts and Seamless Spouting. Nate Garlock alongside Scoot Miller here at the Supreme Court. And Ottawa Glandor flexing their defensive muscle, only giving up one basket there in the first quarter as they hold the 11-point lead 13-2. That was incredible what we saw the first eight minutes from Ottawa Glandorf, the fact that they really dominated things on the defensive end. They forced numerous Crestview turnovers. They dominated the glass at both ends. They had a lot of second chance opportunities at the offensive end. And again, they held Cali Gleg Gregory off the scoring count for eight minutes. Not many teams can say they've done that. Chloe Glenn spin move in the lane. That one's good as she was working against Haley McCoy. Chloe Glenn gets two. That's her sixth point of the night. And I think we're really seeing how much this team misses Lacey McCoy. Lacey McCoy works really hard down low as here's Gregory as she works on the other side. And she gets that one to go down for the and one. 
But well, Lacey McCoy, she does a lot of that dirty work, especially around the rim. She gets in there and she really frees up Callie Gregory to be able to, to do a lot more things because she can kind of focus on being that inside presence. And without that, you can see they're struggling. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, Lacey McCoy is so athletic. She gets off the floor nicely. She gets up and down the floor. She's that presence that could be that equalizer in the glass. Roadhouse can't get that one to go. Rebound, though, down to Kaufman. Kaufman tries to go up, and she's going to get called for the travel. She took a shot, but that was after the travel call. So the Knights with the fortunate call that time, as even I think even some of Crestview thought that they were going, lining up for some free throws. Well, that time Crestview sent everybody to the offensive glass. They had three people saddled around Katie Kaufman, and Kaufman still came down with that offensive rebound before uh, – the contact kind of forced her to shuffle her feet. That's a break for Crestview. They'll bring it up here, trailing by 10. Caitlin Kimmett coming into the game for Kaufman, and she'll go get checked out on the bench. So now here's Gregory working up top. She's going to drive, goes through a couple of defenders, gets it off the glass and good. And yeah. that is not something that we saw at uh, Cali in the first quarter. She did not get the basketball or try to attack that rim too much. Three-point shot on its way. Gregory on the floor, loose ball. This one's going to go jump ball before it went out of bounds, and the possession arrow favors the Knights. Yeah, great job by Crestview. They're really making a concerted effort to get on the uh, defensive glass. They still are going to have their hands full with the length and athleticism of the Titans. At that time, they forced to tie up. They do have the arrow, so now they'll bring it up after scoring uh, five consecutive points here. So Crestview's got it back down into single digits as they are down 15 to seven. Feed to the inside to Gregory. Not able to get it to go, got her own rebound. Second opportunity is good as Callie Gregory now has seven points in the quarter and this is what she can do. When she gets hot, she can take over. Another three-pointer, this one rattles in and out. Hat gets poked away by Glenn, ends up out of bounds as Haley McCoy didn't have that one quite secure. Chloe Glenn able to get her hands on it. Well, you're exactly right when it comes to Callie Gregory. We talked about how she was held scoreless the opening eight minutes, but now she has seven points here in the opening minute 45. But the one thing she's done here in the second quarter, Nate, she's got three consecutive possessions. She's got the ball in the paint. That first quarter, she had the ball maybe three times. They were all outside the three-point line. Now they're trying to post her up inside. And there's another turnover and a run out here for the Titans. It's a miscommunication on that pass. Leads to an easy basket for Grothaus. She gets that one up. Grothaus has her first two points of the night. Well, she's such a great defender, such a high IQ basketball player out there for the Titans. And there she capitalizes from that stingy defense one more time. Klein now, she's going to try to drive with the left hand. Doesn't get it to go, but got her own rebound. Ends up into the hands of McCoy. Looking for somewhere to go with it. As she got it to Nevaeh Ross, and she is fouled. And that is going to go against the freshman, Carson Erford. That is her first, team's second foul of the half. Well, I really like how Crestview starting to attack the paint, you know, something they really did not have any success with in that opening eight minutes. But right now, they're trying to attack it via some Dribble penetration through some ball movement, and they're also trying to isolate some bodies inside. Three-point shot on its way. Gregory gets it to go down. And Callie Gregory, 10 points in the quarter. She's got her team back within five. We got a timeout on the floor. Just a 30-second timeout, though, so we will keep it here. Are you out of town or can't get WOSN? WOSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows, $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. You know, we talked multiple times, Scoop, Callie Gregory, Callie Gregory, but, I, you know, you almost can't say enough about her. When she's able to get going, it's a completely different team. Th this team couldn't do anything in the first quarter. She found some room finally, started to get into attack mode, got to the rim, got second opportunities, and now three-point shots are falling. That's 10 points on the quarter, and we still have 522 left. Yeah, it's amazing. She scored 10 points in, what, two and a half minutes, and the whole Crestview team scored two points in the open eight minutes, so... 
you know, credit Crestview for making some adjustments, but again, Callie Gregory just been a, a load to guard here. And there's a great answer out of the timeout, because that's gonna be a three ball there from Emma Brinkman. And Crestview was giving Ottawa Glendorf some space, kind of telling them, go ahead and take that shot. If you, you know, and finally, they're able to put it down. They had missed about three in a row up to that point, but Emma Brinkman gets that one to go, and it's back out to an eight-point lead. We're going to have a foul. This is going to go. As this one ends up on Kimmett, that is her first team's third. Yeah, I like what uh, Coach Troy Ant did there. He's kind of matched Caitlin uh, Kimmett up there with uh, Gregory to get some length on her, try to take away that outside shot. Nice box out that time by Kaufman. She pushes up ahead. Kimmett's going to drop it off. Can't get that one to go as Gregory comes up with the rebound. Here's Gregory. Works around to the left side, kicks it back out. Ross thought about the shot for a second, but decides to pass it off into the corner. We're going to have an illegal screen that time. And it's going to go against Haley McCoy. That's her first, team second. As we see Ellie Klein come back into the game for Crestview as Nevaeh Ross is going to have a seat. And Lily Hazelman comes back in for the Titans. Erford, she's going to let a three-point shot go. That one's no good. Rebound, though, it comes down to the Titans. And we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on McCoy, and it'll be her second. Well, once again, credit Ottawa Glandorf doing a great job of going to the backside there for the rebound. They had position. And that time, the freshman, Haley McCoy, all she can do is foul after uh, the Titans secure that offensive rebound. So McCoy is going to have a seat as Kreider comes back into the game. Inbounds pass came to Erford, out to Hazelman as they're going to work against Kaufman down low, and she's just so strong. Worked against three Lady Knights down there, able to get it in to push this lead back out to 10. That's amazing. She was triple team, but the, what she did so well, she kept the ball up high. If she takes that down low, it's probably going to get uh, stripped from her. She kept it up high, used her strength, athleticism, gets another deuce. Here's Klein, kicks it back out. As Kilwicky has to move it around, Ellie Klein looking for an opening. Macy Kilwicky, she goes to drive, stops about the free throw line, but loses it. It's going to be a scramble for the loose ball. Kreider's going to come up with it. As Crestview's going to slow things down now, wants to get this back under control. 3.20 left to go here in the half. Josie Kilwicky. She's going to try to drive, has it poked away, gets it back, runs into Kaufman, and we're going to have a foul. We'll see if they get Kaufman on this one. And that is, is that is going to be the second on Kaufman. As right now, Crestview, they, they don't have much of a problem going right at Kaufman. They know what she brings to the table, but on the offensive side, they're dropping three on her to try to stop her down low. And on the other side of the floor, they're going right at her and got her a couple of fouls. Gregory's going to drive. She's met by a couple of Titans. Moves her feet, changes direction, and somehow still gets it up. Two more for Callie Gregory. And a nice answer by the Titans as Erford gets another basket. Gregory trying to set the screen up high. As Gregory had the basketball, but dropped it off. And you see this man-to-man -man defense of Ottawa Glendorf turning up the intensity, trying to get some takeaways. Yeah, the ball pressure's been tremendous. They've had so many deflections. They've already had multiple five-second counts. Again, they're winning those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter, which is easier said than done. You know, the other thing about this defense from Ottawa Glendorf, you know, we've talked so much about it, but you know, it's not just so much that it, it, it's physical and it can wear you out, it can make you tired. It's mental. You can get so frustrated. Just like that makes you force into mistakes, makes you drop your head on the turnover as Chloe Glenn's going to take this one all the way in for two. 
But, you know, this is what it does. As you go through the game, you get frustrated because the things that usually work for you are not working, and you don't know what to do. So you start trying to force things. You make mistakes. You take shots. That was a good one there that time. But sometimes you force shots that you don't want to take, and that's just what they do, and it's hard to face. Yeah, you're right about that. And the, the fact that uh, when they do put that constant pressure on, you know, eventually it's going to wear at you. Instead of meeting some of those passes, you get caught flat-footed. That's where that uh, Titan defense can take over and can turn a turnover into two points. So, you know, it's one thing throwing the ball in the third row of the crowd. It's another thing, those live ball turnovers end up in runouts. We've seen so many of those here in the opening half. That's really been the difference here in a 10-point game. 26-16, 130 left to go here in the half. Gregory with the basketball up high. She drops it off to Kreider. as they just right now seem a little unsure about what they want to do with the basketball. Forced that one down low to Gregory, has it taken away. Hazelman tried to get out in front. That one was just a little bit out of her reach, going to go out of bounds. Last touched by the Titans. Klein on the inbounds, looking to get rid of it. And we're going to have another foul. This one is going to go against Caitlin Kimmett as Caitlin has now picked up her second foul. Team's fifth foul, so both teams still not much foul trouble. Still a couple to give before anybody would be shooting some free throws with a minute eight left to go here in the half. Yeah, no, gee, I'm not sure you can get them in foul trouble with the fact they are so deep on their bench. Uh, they're just going to keep sending fresh bodies in. There's another steal uh, by Erford, a great look ahead. And the and one opportunity on the other end. The freshman gets it. Hazelman might have got away with a little bit of a walk there when she first got it, but she did a nice job of adjusting, getting up through the contact to finish for two. Now she has an opportunity for the old-fashioned and one. Yeah, she really did an excellent job of, of body awareness there and, and using uh, both sides of the floor there. Again, she's really been a spark plug off the bench here tonight. You know, she's another one of those uh, defenders that just can wear on you with their quickness and her ability to, to take you one-on-one. -on -one. And there she converts on the uh, conventional three-point play. So just like that, the Titans are able to stretch this lead back up to 13 here as we're under the final minute mark of this opening half. So Crestview had gotten this one back within five at 15 to 10. But since then, a 14-4 run makes this a 15-point lead with 39 seconds left to go. Crestview trying to end the half with something positive. Klein, she drives, has it taken away. Erford one more time. Drops it off, puts it up, does Brinkman. No good, Erford gets the rebound. That one's no good. Chloe Glenn comes out of nowhere, takes that one up, and she's going to get fouled and go to the free throw, three throw line. A uh, tremendous uh, job that time by Ottawa Glandorf once again. You know, it started with that nice play at the defensive end by Erford. She had an excellent pass. They missed the bunny there on the two-on-one opportunity, but a second and third opportunity as they hit the offensive glass creates another chance to head to the charity stripe to shoot two. And the run continues here for the Titans. Chloe Glenn's first free throw is up. That one is no good. Ellie Klein was whistled for that foul. It's her first. It was the team's fourth of the half. As Chloe Glenn readies her second shot. It is up. This one is good. And right now, Glandar still has one foul to give. So they want to continue to get some ball pressure here, try to force uh, Crestview to take some time off the clock, bring it up. Gregory thought about Thought about trying to drive that time, but almost lost the handle, had to pass it off. Macy Kowicki has to throw it up, and she's going to be fouled. And they're going to give her a three-shot foul on that one, it looks like. As Kaylin Grothaus is going to get called for that foul. Well, heads up play by Macy Kulwicki that time, the 5'6 senior. New time was running out, really was not in a position to do much, but she launched up a shot, and Ottawa Glandorf uh, bailed her out, so now she'll head to the stripe here to shoot three. 
with no time remaining here in this opening half. The first one hits the back of the iron, bounds out. So right now the lead's still at 14 here for the Titans. Macy's second free throw is up. That one's off the front of the rim. So she tried to make the adjustment after putting the first one a little bit too hard, a little too soft on the second. See if she can get the third one to go. Shot is up. And it is off. So Macy Kulwicki not able to connect on any of the free throws to end the half. And after two quarters of play, Ottawa Glandorf has and they weathered that storm and that run from Callie Gregory to extend their lead. They're up 14, 30 to 16. We'll step outside and be back with the second half of the USN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure for Gold X. Ultimate Outdoor, division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Welcome back to Robert J. Hermiller's Gymnasium here at Ottawa Glendorf High School. Nate Garlock alongside Scoop Miller. And Scoop, first quarter, all Ottawa Glendorf. It seemed early in that second that Crestview was going to make this a game. They'd cut it within five. Callie, Gre Callie Gregory went on a great run there. But then it was too much out of a Glandorf as they pushed their lead out to 14. Yeah, I thought the last three minutes of that opening half was awfully big for Ottawa Glandorf as Crestview seemed to have momentum. You know, they were once behind 15-2, to two, got within five points. But then uh, OG's defense really took over down the stretch, keeping the Knights off the board uh, the final three minutes. Result a 30-16 advantage here as OG starts out the basketball here to start things out in the second half. And it looks like Crestview is going to come out and they want to come out in that zone. But Caitlin Kemet comes out and immediately hits a three-point shot to extend this lead. Yeah, that's something that's kind of a pick your poison right now for Crestview. That's something they're going to kind of roll the dice with. But uh, Kemet makes some pay there. She buries the three there. And we have another illegal screen. This time it's going to go against Kreider. As Kennedy Kreider picks up her first, it's the team's first. And, and credit the Ottawa Glendorf defense for these moving screen calls you're seeing on Crestview. You know, they're so active and so aggressive defensively, they're not an easy team to set screens against. You know, a lot of times you stand around, you can set screens on those girls. They're so aggressive. Here's a nice play here by the Knights. And we're going to have a run out and a great finish there by Ellie Klein. Klein did a nice job of anticipating that pass, jumping in front of it. As Crestview trying to turn a little defense into offense themselves. Chloe Glenn kicks it back out. Three-pointer no good as Gregory comes up with the rebound. A oh, big check out by Gregory. That's something they have to do, keep uh, the Titans to one and done there. Klein lets the three-pointer go. That one was about halfway down before it came back out as Chloe Glenn comes up with the rebound. As looks like maybe we have a spill on the floor over here by the Crestview bench, so a stoppage of play here. Ottawa Glandorf was led in scoring in the first half by Chloe Glenn. She had nine points in her return to the starting lineup. And the Crestview Knights obviously led in scoring by Callie Gregory. She had 12 all in that second quarter. Again, that's the thing about Ottawa Glandorf. They have so much depth. You know, they have so many different players that can put the ball in the hoop there, so... That's the one thing when you're matched up with them, you have to guard all five players. When you leave someone alone, they're going to make you pay. Yeah, right now, Crestview only four people in the scoring column as Josie Kilwicki has two, Callie Gregory with 12, Ellie Klein with two, and Macy Kilwicki with two. When you look at Ottawa Glandorf, though, Carson Erford, four, Lily Hazelman, three, Caitlin Grothaus, two, Emma Brinkman, three, Caitlin Kimmett, five, Katie Kaufman, she has seven, and Chloe Glenn, she has nine. So as you mentioned, all up and down that lineup, they can get production. Doesn't really matter who it is. Yeah, you're right. Seven different girls scored for the Titans that opening half. Meanwhile, for Crestview, just three scored. But it's nice to see Ellie Klein get involved here early in the offense. She got her first bucket there uh, for Crestview just moments ago. So, you know, Klein, one of the many talented sophomores out there uh, for both teams here tonight. But she's a girl last year that averaged over eight points a game as a freshman. And she's a girl that can certainly carry a part of this offensive load here for the Knights. So we must have had a, quite a water spill over there as they were trying to get the water bottles re refilled into the benches. Looks like just about every towel that Crestview brought tonight is being used to clean that up. 
We are going to be back underway here in just a second. Chloe Glenn waiting to get the ball as she will trigger the inbound. Six forty-five left to go here in the third quarter. Ottawa Glendorf still with a comfortable lead. Here's Kimmett. Kicks it over to Grothaus. Chloe Glenn is calling it on the inside. Miscommunication that time as Kaylin Kimmett passed it right to a Crestview Knight. And now they're going to have an opportunity here to see if they can't cut into this lead a little bit. Yeah, nice read by Kennedy Kreider, the sophomore there of the Knights. Uh, stepped in front of that pass beautifully. Callie Gregory wanted to take that shot, tried to adjust, but Erford did a nice job getting back over there, not allowing her to set her feet. See, Adwa Glendorf, it doesn't matter whether it's Callie Gregory or any other night, they're running about two people at every Crestview jersey that comes into that paint. Chloe Glenn on the long pass to Grothaus. Grothaus gets that one up off the side. Erford, and she's going to get called for an over the back that time. As I'm not sure how Chloe Glenn had such a perfect pass. She went almost the whole length of the floor and just dropped it into Grothaus's hands. And Grothaus, I think even herself, was a little bit surprised with it. Yeah, that was effortlessly as well. You know, she just kind of flipped her wrist, and all of a sudden she uh, throws an absolute strike that threads the needle. Unfortunately, OG misses a run out. Erfield uh, whistled for the foul going on the back there. But that's certainly a foul that uh, Coach Yant will live with. In fact, they continue attack the glass, put pressure on Crestview on each and every rebound. Now Crestview trying to work, get things going offensively. And right now, it just kind of seems like there's too many Knights in one area. They're not doing a very good job of getting Ottawa Glendorf spread out to give themselves space to be able to run into these lanes and, and maybe get some things going as this one just gets taken away by Erford. Grothaus, she's going to lead the charge. Drops it down to Glenn. Glenn gets it up with the left hand. Oh, what a pass by Kaylin Grothaus, the sophomore. Drops a dime in traffic there. And right now, the high water mark here for the Titans up 35-18, just three minutes into the second half. And it has been a while since Crestview has been in this position. As we mentioned coming in with a six-game win streak, haven't found themselves down big in any game that they've played yet this season. And they have a hole they got to climb out of here in the second half. Kreider. Moves it around, gets it into the hands of Josie Kowicki. She's going to drive around with the right hand. She's trying to go up, but has it poked away. As Ottawa Glendorf continuing to do a good job of getting their hands in to disrupt the ball. You know, I keep finding myself counting the OG players out there, and there's still only five, but it seems like there's so many more. They're so active. You do a great job of, of presenting help. They know exactly where to run people at to double team, get those extra defenders, especially on Callie Gregory out there. Have just made everything very difficult here for the Knights here this evening. Glenn working against the double team. She's still going to get this shot up, but that one's no good. Gets her own rebound. Puts it right back up again, and this one goes. Yeah, that's just amazing. That time she was double teamed there, kind of forced to no man's land. And not only got the shot off, she's able to get the offensive rebound and the putback. There's tenacious defense once again from Grothaus. She's going to cause a 10-second count on her own. Yeah, you know, we talked about, Nate, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles, and they continue to do that. That's just amazing defense right there. You're that locked in, and uh, it's man-to-man -man pressure there. Again, credit Grothaus. She just made a fantastic play. That sometimes gets overlooked. There's another girl kind of battling back from an injury. Nice to see her out there, really contributing to her team here tonight. As we're starting to get to that part of the game where Ottawa Glendorf, that mental part of the the, uh, their defensive pressure starts wearing on you as you almost start panicking every time you kind of see them because at this point you're just so used to seeing them take the ball away from you. You're afraid that's what's going to happen as a turnover on Ottawa Glendorf that time. But th and that's what happened on that 10-second call. Roadhouse comes in, you almost panic. You think she'll know she's going to take it away. You pick it up and you pick it up in a terrible part of the floor, nowhere to go with it. And, you know, they've almost gotten into your head to a point where that's all they need to do to force the turnovers now. Well, you're right. There's not a lot of people out there that really want the ball in their hands seeing that kind of pressure. So nobody's really going out of the way to come back to meet a pass or, here, I'll take it up, you know, and uh, just puts more pressure on the ball handler. Gregory, turnaround jumper. That one rattles in for two. 
Boy, that's a tough shot. You can't really defend that much better than uh, the Titans did that time. Credit Gregory, she's now up to 14 points. Remember, 12 of them came in about a four minute span in that second quarter. Three point shot and they're not gonna be able to close the gap if they're trading twos for threes right now as Emma Brinkman has her second three pointer of the game. Well, Brinkman comes in shooting over 44% from beyond the arc. Here's another run out here after the nice pass and rebound by Katie Kaufman. As the putback goes in, as Emma Brinkman gets another two points. She is back-to-back -back buckets. Kaufman on the takeaway, and this one goes as Kaufman is going to go to the free throw line to shoot the and one. Just like that, a 24-point lead for the Titans. 2.36 still left to go here in the third quarter. And Coach Gregory wants to take the timeout. Looks like this one's going to be a full timeout. So we will step aside as well, and we'll be back on WOSA. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Corolla X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of all the spouting. Onwood Landorf continuing to turn offense into defense, and sometimes they can do it quickly. Yeah, their best uh, offense is their defense, and right now they're on a 7-0 run that goes back about 16 seconds. They got that uh, deep three. Then they came up with a steal and a run out, and they got another steal, and now they're going for the end one to try to make it an 8-0 run here as uh, Katie Kaufman looking to uh, get double digits uh, with this free throw right here. As Kaufman does connect. 45-20, to 25-point 20, lead. Klein drops it down. Here's Kreider. Looking to get into the hands of Gregory, and she does. We've seen Gregory able to take over when she gets hot. They're hoping for the hot hand now. Nevaeh Ross's shot, that one's going to be off. Hazelman with the rebound. She's going to push the tempo. Brinkman thought about it again. Here's Hazelman. She decides to go baseline, pulls up. That one's off the side of the backboard. Rebound comes down to Ross. Gregory pulls back, lets the night offense get set. As right now, they're just trying to run these screens to get somebody a little bit of space to hopefully get a, a good look at the basket. And that's a good pass down low from Klein to Gregory for two. Yeah, nice job running that baseline offense. And one of the few times tonight, Gregory uh, was able to uh, catch the ball deep in the paint. Three-pointer from Emma Brinkman. She is now... Hit three three-pointers, two of them in this quarter, and Ottawa Glandorf extends the lead. Ah, what a big third quarter she's had. And again, uh, she's another one of those girls you just have to guard, can't let her catch and shoot in rhythm, or she can hurt you with that deep three. We've seen that multiple times tonight. Crestview this quarter has six points as a team. Emma Brinkman, eight. A minute seven left to go here in the third quarter as Katie Kaufman picks up her third foul. Megan Horseman coming into the game for the first time tonight, and Chloe Glenn checks back in for Ottawa Glandorf. Trying to find somewhere to go with the ball. They finally get it in underneath the basket, gets poked away, and it will stay with Crestview. Oh, and again, great. OG, just really nothing for free tonight. They're doing a great job of getting the ball pressure, getting those passing lanes. They've had so many deflections and add one more to it right there. I think it will remain here with the Knights. And right now, it just Crestview just looks so uncertain of what they want to do with the basketball. They've had some openings um, if they wanted to throw this one deep on the inbounds, but they really want to get underneath the basket, and Crestview's been ready every time. Here's Gregory. She gets in the lane, guarded by four Titans, somehow was able to get through there. But the foul will be called. This one is going to go on number 24, Micah Aldrich. It'll be her first. That's certainly a foul that Coach Troy Yance could have lived with. That time they had Gregory kind of double teamed, and uh, she really was just trying to step through the defense, force something up. She gets bailed out, but she comes up empty on the first of two there from the stripe. 
So a rare miss from Callie Gregory, who is an excellent free throw shooter. First one's no good, but second one goes. 48-23, under a minute left to go here in the third quarter. As Ottawa Glandorf continues to have this big lead. Hazelman gets it, and she's going to pull it back, go around near the logo, up around midcourt. Thirty-five seconds left to go as Ottawa Glandorf looks like they're not in much of a hurry right now. May just want to run this timeout and get to the fourth quarter. Hazelman gets down into the corner. Pulls it back up. Under 20 left to go now. And some miscommunication. That's one of those, even in a, in a big uh, score like this where you have the big lead, you know, those are the ones that Coach Ant will not let you forget about when you go back to watch the film. Well, that's why you're working on that right here. You're working on that uh, quarter-ending uh, scenario, and that time uh, just a little miscommunication, but something to learn from. There's a nice deal and a run out. We'll see if uh, Kimmett can finish, and she does. Caitlin Kimmett somehow gets the steal, gets down there, takes the contact. Got that basketball to go in. It looked like she kind of threw a line drive up there, but it bounced off the rim just right. And with 1.1 second left to go here in the third, she makes a trip to the free throw line for the three-point opportunity. And this is what good teams do. You know, they just turned it over, an unforced turnover there, trying to wind down the clock here to end the third quarter. Instead of hanging their heads, what they do, they come back, make a defensive play. And Caitlin Kimmett turns it into an old-fashioned three-point play. And that'll take us to the fourth quarter, but what a great quarter for the uh, Titans once again. A bumped their lead to 51-23 with eight minutes to go. We're going to step aside and we'll be back with the fourth quarter right here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure for Gola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. Fourth quarter just about underway here at the Supreme Court. Nate Garlock alongside Scoop Miller. And Ottawa Glandorf only seems to be getting stronger. Quarter scores of 13, 17, and 21 there in the third quarter. Yeah, their defense has held uh, Crestview to single digits in two of those three quarters, including just two points in the opening eight minutes. And remember, this is a Crestview team and it has a quality win against Liberty Benton. Liberty Benton won the two Ottawa Glandorf losses. So how impressive this been tonight? And there's Callie Gregory talking about impressive. I think she's now up to 20 points as a junior hits one from NBA range there to start things out. And then Chloe Glenn comes right down and puts one up. And you know, that's what we've seen for most of the night. And they don't let Crestview feel very good about themselves for very long because every time there's a score, it seems like Ottawa Glendorf has been able to go down and answer. Yeah, and Chloe Glenn is just so consistent. You know you know what you're going to get from her each and every time out. That's 100% effort, and she's had a fine all-round game. She does it at both ends. Great answer there after the uh, three from Gregory. Here's Gregory again, getting worked along uh, by the freshman Erford. She gets it down low. That one's high off the glass by Haley McCoy. Well, that's a big time play by the freshman Haley McCoy. Not many people are going to challenge the OG down there in the low block. She made a pretty move there, got the nice soft uh, kiss off the window. And we are going to have a foul this time. And as McCoy trying to reach in and take it away from Glenn. A great recognition that time by with Glandorf. They saw that they had Chloe Glenn uh, locked in one on one. And she did a great job trying to seal her man, asking for the uh, basketball. She wasn't very happy that foul was called because she would have had an easy deuce there. But uh, it was a good call, and uh, OG will take it out underneath her own hoop. Sometimes you can only shake your head because it's just amazing how some of these shots go down. The freshman, Carson Erford, uh, falling down away from the basket, one-handed, gets that one in. And, I, you know, I've been able to see Ottawa Glendorf. This is my second time this year seeing them. But Carson Erford does not play like a freshman. 
No. She, she, no. When, you, when you see the things that she does, even like the simple things on a run out earlier uh, tonight, you know, as she goes down, as she cuts the floor to make sure she can cut off the defender to get to the basket to make sure the defender have to go through her. The little things like that are not things you typically see out of freshman players. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, that, that's the one thing I try to notice right away, being a former coach, you know. Uh, Herford's one of those players that just really has so many things on the upside. You know, she shoots the ball so well, nearly 60% from the floor, 50% from beyond the arc, but the little things, the intangibles, she does so well. And Kaufman's going to get whistled for another foul. This will be her fourth. So one of the few things that have not gone Ottawa Glendorf's way tonight as Katie Kaufman picks up her fourth. That's just the team's fourth of the half as Katie will have a seat. And Emma Brinkman's going to come into the game. And I think right there, just that exchange that they were able to do explains why Ottawa Glendorf is so well. Katie Kaufman frustrated. Four, four fouls. Has to go. You're putting a player, the quality and the caliber of Katie Kaufman, taking her off the floor, and you replace her with somebody who has been lights out from three-point land tonight. Yeah, and again, it's just kind of pick your poison. They've got uh, really – so many uh, skilled players, but they have so many different skill sets. You know, that's what makes these girls really hard to defend. And, and all these girls play so hard at the defensive end. That's what's so impressive. You know, a lot of kids will play hard at the offensive end. These girls play hard at both ends. And I think uh, Crestview has felt that from the get-go. Another run out. Glenn does a great job. And Erford just puts it up. A great eye gets that one to go as Carson Erford Gets another basket. She now has eight on the night. Yeah, another great play by the freshman. You know, she's running full blast one way. The pass behind her, she's able to catch it, jump stop, go up under control, and made that look awfully easy as she knocks it in off the window. You know, that's just another example, though, of what we are talking about with Erford. You know, the run out starts, you know, as Grothaus was able to go, gets it up to Glenn. Glenn, she knows she's falling away, not at an angle, just a quick touch pass, but Erford was ready. Not a lot of, again, just you don't see a lot of players that young ready for the ball at all times, especially on a play like that. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and the reason she had to give it up was she did not have a good angle. She was in the middle of the floor, so she was going to take some steps with the basketball. She didn't get rid of it right away. She made a great play. And again, credit her for another athletic play that the Titans make look awfully easy. And Ottawa Glendorf, we mentioned, off to a late start this year. They do have that loss to Liberty Benton, also a second loss as well as Gregory gets all the way in and gets this one to go. But they definitely, especially their last couple of games, and this will be the fourth game where that margin of victory is, you know, it's not quite 30 points right now, but it's close turnaround by Glenn as she, I think, is enjoying her return to the starting lineup. And so are these OG fans, you know, seeing her back out there, uh, really contributing again. She's another girl just worked so hard on both ends of the floor. But, you know, this Ottawa Glendor team, if this, if this is how they're going to play night in and night out against all the quality of competition that they play, you know, this Crestview team, you mentioned, you know, they, they knocked off Liberty Benton last week. That was a great game. They came with a great game plan. Um, they did everything well that night and handed a very tough Liberty Benton their first loss. Same Liberty Benton team that came in here and knocked off Ottawa Glendorf. And then this is what Ottawa Glendorf does to Crestview. You know, they're only going to get better, obviously. They're only going to get better into shape. But if this is what they can do when they're at their best, you know, you're looking at a, another high-quality Ottawa Glendorf team. Yeah, you're right. You know, this team's got such a high upside. Remember, a lot of these girls have missed the summer workouts because they were still battling from injuries from a year ago. So the fact that uh, you, you're trying to mix a lot of kids in the pot, we've talked about a couple of the freshmen kind of getting their first varsity time. You know, they're really doing a nice job. You can see them getting stronger and stronger week in, week out, which certainly is always your goal as a coach. Chloe Glenn down low. She goes to work one more time, has this one blocked. Crash, you still playing tough. Four minutes left to go here in the game. We're going to have another whistle. Crash, you want to take the time out and talk about it? We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor division of Alt Seamless Spouting. 
Don't forget, Season 18 of Sports Report is underway. Join Patrick Cameron for a full hour of the most comprehensive sports coverage around all season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Under four minutes left to go here in the game. Crestview coming out of the timeout, still trying to see if they can't get things going offensively. As they have struggled for most of the night to get anybody but Callie Gregory going. That one almost taken away as Lily Hazelman able to get her hands on it as Crestview's going to reset. Yowicki had to move that time as she was getting close to the five-second call. She gets rid of it. And here's Gregory, going to work into the lane. Had to go against the double team, can't get that one to go in. Fight for the loose ball, it's going to go out of bounds. And the basketball will stay with Crestview. Inbound goes to Gregory, and we are going to have a defensive foul. I believe this one will be against Brinkman. It is. As Carly Brinkman picks up her first foul. It is the 16 foul for Ottawa Glandorf. So if Crestview wants to try to slow this game down at all, maybe try to get some extra possessions, they, one more foul will get them a trip to the free throw line. Gregory, deep three. That one's off, rebound. Comes down to Brinkman as Hazelman hits the floor. We're going to have a foul. And this one's going to go against Macy Kowicki as Kowicki is going to pick up, I believe that is her first foul of the night. Coffin back into the game. See her drop it off to Brinkman. As Brinkman has been almost lights out from the three-point line. And this was Carly Brinkman pulling up from the free throw line. She has that one partially blocked. And Crestview comes up with it. Gregory pushes it up into the front court. Drops it down. Here's McCoy. Can't get it to go. Fight for the rebound. Ends up in the hands of Ottawa Glandorf. Hoffman pushed the tempo to get back up, but Ottawa Glenridge decides to slow things down as Hazelman trying to work against some tough defense uh, from Macy Kulwicki, but able to get out of trouble. 2.15 left to go here in the game. Another turnover. Gregory down low has that one poked away. Fight for the loose ball. And we're going to have a jump ball as bodies continue to hit the floor. Both teams playing hard here towards the end of this game, not wanting to give anything up. Well, you took the words out of my mouth. I think both teams are playing uh, just as hard to defensive ends right now as they have the whole game. And that's a credit to uh, really both these programs. And that's why both these programs have been down to uh, the state finals here in recent years and certainly uh, have strong traditions. Gregory fought through a lot of traffic down low to get that shot up. Can't get it to fall, but she will make a trip to the free throw line to shoot two. And, you know, obviously Crestview still has a lot of big games coming up, a lot of conference games. You know, everybody kind of chasing Delphus Jefferson in the NWC. You know, this Crestview team, when they're on, though, give, can play with anybody, including that Wildcat squad, you know, the WBL. For Ottawa, Glendorf, um, always tough games, night in and night out of that conference as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough to run the table in, in either league when you think about Northwest Conference, you know, with Lipsick in there now, and of course, Delphus Jefferson, Crestview, uh, you know, Bluffton, all those teams uh, capable of beating anybody on a given night. Then you look at the WBL with Ottawa, Glendorf, and Bath and St. Mary still all alone at to the top at 3 0, but you got Shawnee and Van Wert. Very talented squads as well, knocking on the door. They're just a game back. Another tie up. And the possession arrow this time does favor Ottawa Glandorf. And Nate, one thing about the Northwest Conference, it's been amazing. This year, the Northwest Conference versus non league opponents, they're 40 and 15. That's over a 73% clip that they're winning games. That just speaks volumes 
about uh, how good that conference has been. Of course, the WBL is, is always really good. Last year, they won over 55% of their non-league games, or over 50% this year. But again, uh, a lot of uh, great teams in both these conferences, and a big reason why uh, these teams, uh, respective conferences, always make it down to Columbus, it seems like, you know. You know, both these programs we mentioned have been down the final four uh, five different times. Of course, Ottawa Glandor has been there five of the last eight years, I believe. They've had quite a run here under coach uh, Troy Yant in his third, or I'm sorry, his 11th season. But meanwhile, both these coaches, wow, what can you say about these guys? These guys come in averaging um, combined over 80% of their games are winning. So it says something about how hard their teams play night in, night out. And certainly this is not the night that uh, Crestview envisioned, but uh, Otto Glandorf will get uh, kind of revenge, so to speak. They lost a tough one in Convoy last year, 51-45. But right now it's been no doubt tonight the better team as the uh, Titans have been off the good for uh, nearly 32 minutes now. Final minute of game play as Ross lets the floater go. That one rattles out. And Ottawa Glandorf went out of bounds with it. Looked like Lily Hazelman had that possession as she traveled out of bounds. So it will stay with Crestview. Ritter trying to get this one to go. Put back no good. McCoy knocks that one out as it'll go back to the Titans. And, you know, we're about to turn the calendar and head into 2023. And once you hit January, it seems like the basketball schedule just flies. You know, end of part of November, you know, these girls have been playing since mid-November, their regular season games, about six weeks of game play. We're about the halfway point of the season. You know, these teams are starting to kind of figure out who they are, getting into the meat of their schedule. And before you know it, we're going to be at tournament draw time. Yeah, and that's, uh, like you said, going to be just around the corner. But, you know, this was the type of game I think that's going to get you prepared for the tournament for out of Glendorf. It's going to be a, a quality win. When it gets time for the sectional draw, uh, five weeks out. But certainly uh, for Crestview, you got exposed to her a little bit. You had to play without uh, Lacey McCoy, but certainly you're going to regroup and you got the uh, a lot to play for uh, once the new year rolls around for both these squads. You know, and I don't know that Lacey McCoy would have made a 30 point difference tonight. You know, but you can tell that this Crestview team, they are just different when Lacey McCoy is not in the starting lineup. They missed her presence pretty much all over the floor. She does a lot of things down low. She facilitates a lot of other things for these Lady Knights. And, you know, her being out tonight made this a very different game. But from start to finish, Ottawa Glandorf just completely dominant as they're going to take home the 29-point victory. Yeah, I think that shows the respect they had for Crestview coming in. You know, these girls were ready to play. You know, they remembered that loss from a year ago, and they came out uh, with that tremendous first quarter, got that 13-2 uh, lead. You know, Crestview didn't go away, but credit Otto Glander, if their defense was just stellar for 32 minutes, they are able to uh, beat a very good Crestview squad by 29 points. So certainly a quality win here for the Titans tonight. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium. I'd like to thank our crew tonight, Jacob and Marshall, doing a great job on the cameras as always. I'd like to thank our editor back at the station, Megan, doing all the dirty work to make all this sound and look good. You guys do a great job. We appreciate you as always. One final time from the Supreme Court, Ottawa Glandorf completely dominant tonight as they go home with a big victory, 63-34 over the Crestview Knights. For Scoot Miller, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.